Could we see a Phil Kessel return to the Leafs? Where does he fit and how could Toronto make this work? We'll discuss this coming up on this episode of Hattrick HQ. But before we get into that, we just want to say that 96% of you guys aren't subscribed. So if you're looking for a place for daily Leafs and NHL content, look no further and go down and smash that subscribe button. Uh, we're trying to hit 1,000 subscribers before the season starts. You guys smashed our goal of 250 out of the park. We just wanted to thank you for that. And But with that said, let's get right into the first topic of this video, which is could Phil Kessel be the missing piece for the Toronto Maple Leafs? Obviously, Phil Kessel is a household name uh, around the NHL now. Uh, obviously, if the 35-year-old just coming off a Stanley Cup win uh, with the Vegas Golden Knights. Uh, that would make him a three-time Stanley Cup champion. But obviously, Phil throughout his career has been a great goal scorer, a great playmaker uh, in the NHL, uh, holding the Ironman title. And I know uh, when we mentioned about uh, doing this video, Mark, I know I've seen a smile on your face. Uh, wh what do you think about uh, Phil Kessel possibly coming back to the Leafs? Honestly, I would love it. You know, you look at Phil, he's a guy, he's uh, won three Stanley Cups now. He's had incredible runs with teams. He's a goal scorer. He can play make. He can almost do everything on the offensive end of the puck. You get a little worried about his defense at times, but, you know, in right situations, I think you can kind of hide him on defense, especially with the Leafs team where they have a bit of more of a defensive edge between some players like David Kampf and so-and-so. So but like I said, you know, you get a guy that can pot you, even at the age 35, he could pot you 20 goals. He could put up 30 assists. And honestly, I think most teams should be looking into him. Yeah, definitely. I think it's not a guy that you just glance over. I think, obviously, he's a seasoned vet in the league. He knows how to win. Uh, he's just such a great guy, a lovable personality in the NHL. I know a lot of fans uh, really love uh, Phil Kessel. So uh, we're hoping that he'll come back uh in into a canadian team with toronto because i know uh this this guy would add so much to this team and you know it's just great for him a great fit for him and it would just be nice to see him retire possibly in the trial may place uniform kind of where he started his big outburst of his career uh, but we're going to get into our next topic of the video where does he fit in the toronto may place lineup and, and i know uh we're thinking about Maybe throwing him here on the third line uh, in the bottom six role, I think, you know, he'd fit in well with Cam uh, David Kampf and Max Stoney Domi, and I think that could be a really sneaky line that could put out a lot of offense for Toronto Maple Leafs. What do you think, Mark? Oh, no, definitely. I mean, you looked at him last year. He did spend a lot of time on that third line with Vegas with uh, Chandler Stevenson and William Carrier. But, like, you look into this kind of thing where I said, you know, the defense from Phil's end is not always there. But, I mean, you look at a guy, David Kampf is one of, you know, the best uh, defensive centers, in my opinion, in the league. He's not a top one, but you put him on the line where he has Max Domi, who's an incredible playmaker. You have Phil Kessel, who's gifted with shooting and passing. And I think this would elevate this line so much where you can see Kampf maybe score, you know, his 10 goals, maybe 15 you can see Phil in the situation where he gets 20 goals, 20 assists, and Domi's just a wild card in a good way where you could see him, you know, pop maybe 20 goals. We've seen him do it in Montreal, and you could still get this high output of playmaking on his ends, and it almost works with the grittiness from Domi, the defensive edge by Kampf, and then Phil, who's just your go-to offensive powerhouse in the situation. Yeah, definitely. I think this would be such a great line for Toronto. And I know I've been vocal on this channel, uh, a vocal Max Domi enjoyer. So uh, I think, you know, uh, putting a guy like uh, Phil on a line with Domi, I think, you know, both guys uh, will benefit from this tremendously. Like, I could uh, see Phil Kessel probably getting 40 points, like you said, 20 goals, 20 assists. And, and Domi, like you said, is a wild card. Uh, nobody really knows what his full potential is, but obviously those years in Montreal, uh, he produced, he he puts his whole heart and soul into the game, and he's really becomes the heart of a team. And I think when you put such an offensively gifted guy uh, with a guy like Max Domi, I think it's only going to do wonders for your thing, but uh, for your team. But uh, another thing that uh, we could see here is Phil Kessel possibly juice Loosen up the power play as we take a look here uh, at the power play two unit, uh, having him on with Domi, Nyes, uh, Nylander, and Klingberg. I think this 
having that just as such a solid power play two unit uh, would make both of the uh, both of these units just uh, convert so much more uh, i think you know when you got just a pure goal scorer like phil there with guys like nylander and and domi and nice and klingberg that who can really quarterback a power play i think this power play would be unmatched and really underrated yeah, no, definitely. Because you look at the Leafs, their top power play units always just been this juggernaut that can perform. They're going to put up goals. But sometimes you see them kind of get a little sluggish. Maybe they get a little tired throughout the game, depending on how many situations they have. So it's always nice to have this second unit, especially if you can throw Phil in here. It already looks good with the guys like Domi, Nyes, Nylander, Klingberg. But you almost get this more of this scary factor out of Phil, too, where you're like, okay, I can't really leave this guy open because he can still score. You know, if you almost commit to him too much, he is going to pass out of this. And not only is this going to really boost the Leafs' second power play unit, but almost like I said, takes some edge off the top guys, maybe gives them a little break throughout the game. You know, if you have a lead, you don't need to kind of force the big guys to be out there when you don't need them to be. And like I said, the fill being in the bottom six, the Leafs' bottom six is incredible in my opinion. But it kind of gets a little worrying with a bit of offense where you have a guy like Ryan Reeves, Lafferty, Yaron Croak, Domi, and Kemp. There's not a lot of guys that are pure scorers in this. So not only does this make the power play better, but I think Phil just injected into this bottom six gives you that more, okay, we can put this third line out when we need a goal and not a situation where it's, let's just put them out just to kill some minutes. Yeah, and I definitely agree with you. I think... Uh... You know, the, the Leafs bottom six is great, but it's always nice to speculate uh, what they could add to to juice it up a little bit. And, and I think, you know, Phil Kessel has, has said in the past that he loved his time in Toronto. And I think, like, him coming back to Toronto isn't out of the out of the realm or, or anything. I don't think it's out of pocket or anything. I think it, it is a really potential thing that he could do. I think maybe we could see him retire in a Toronto uniform. I think that would be pretty cool. Just, uh, I don't know, even as a, a Habs fan, I just think that would be great to see Kessel come back and you know play his final years in Toronto but we're going to get into our next topic here which is uh, how could Toronto make this work and I know a lot of people are saying you know like Toronto's really uh, cap strapped and, and you know they probably wouldn't be able to, to make this work but uh, he's only coming off a one and a half million dollar contract this season uh, with the Vegas Golden Knights so at that value, I think Phil's such a great player. I think that the Leafs could even get him at one million uh, if they were like willing to pick him up for sure. Yeah, you look at it last year; he came off as one point five. You know, obviously he has an Ironman streak. He's playing every regular season game for as long as you can remember. But you kind of notice that he didn't play a lot of playoff games. I think it was four total games. So in the situation where you could see maybe he's slowing down a tiny bit, or you know, it's just taking a hit on his body, that you could almost convince him to take this one million let him prove that he can be in the league he still gets a million dollars gets a move to toronto i think he has a house there in the off season as well so it wouldn't be too fair but i think you can get him for a million and kind of this situation where if it doesn't work out you can always bury him if he works out i mean that's incredible you have a great guy on your lines the only issue with this is you would have to get rid of someone like lafferty or uh, yarn croak but in a situation where you want to inject this more offense into your bottom six, I think you can kind of live with kind of letting Lafferty go and bringing in a guy like Pontus Holmberg or someone like that to kind of fill that fourth line role there too. Yeah, and like you said, like in the NHL, it's a lot of give and take, right? Like if you if you want someone like Phil, you're gonna have to give somebody up, uh, which obviously isn't the best situation for the play for those players. But you know, it's for what's better for the team and what's better for the organization. And I think bringing a guy like Phil in is only gonna help the organization out a lot more. Uh, I think this year, I think Toronto's really looking for a strong cup run, and, and I think adding a guy like Phil could definitely increase their chances of. Of making it to the Stanley Cup Finals, uh, just having such a deep forward core, and even now they have a deep de uh, defensive core as well with three solid goalies on the back end. So if you if you add more scoring to the bottom six, it's not going to hurt your team. It's only going to juice them up a bit more, and you know make them push towards that uh, that playoff pitcher and push towards a Stanley Cup which I know a lot of Toronto fans and I know the organization wants to see I know it's been a long time coming but it's in the near future what do you think Mark no definitely I think this is one of the deepest teams the Leafs had from just the top end talent to the bottom six their defense their goaltending 
everything's kind of looking like it's just going to be a strong push for Toronto. I know people are going to call me a delusional Leafs fan, but I think this is the year that they can really make that big push. You've seen them make the second round. They're kind of getting the taste of it. They had a couple of guys that they kind of needed last year. So I think even just adding Phil into this bottom six, if he can score a Stanley Cup winning goal, I mean, I'll eat my own socks at this point. <laughs> For sure. Hey, guys, uh, we'd like to hear your takes on this down in the comment section. Well, do you think we're really out to lunch on this one, or or do you think that this is uh, something that we could see actually happen? I think I think it's definitely something we can see happen. I know uh, there's been more crazy things than that, but we'd like to hear your guys' take on it down in the comment section below. But we're actually going to get into a new segment here, uh, which is comment of the day. And comment of the day uh, today goes to Patrick G. Mafia. Uh, he says, uh, fun channel, just been around for a week or so, but you guys have a lot of talent. All the best, and go Leafs, go, or, and go Leafs beauty move. And that was, uh, of course, to extending uh, Austin Matthews. We just want to give a shout out to Patrick G. Mafia. Uh, thanks for watching the videos, and you guys make sure to comment down below because uh, we're going to be doing comment of the day every now and then. And uh, if you want to be featured, make sure to hit a comment down below. But I've been Casey alongside my co-host Mark Pye. Keep your stick on the ice.